Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to add new furniture build parts to Player Building System V2. Um, so for this video, I have a tent here that we're going to um, set up and uh, add to the system. So uh, we'll start by going to uh, the uh, into the um, Player Building files, then Blueprints, Build Parts. Um, then we're going to right click the Master Build Part and do Create Child Blueprint Class. I'm just going to call mine VP Tent and uh, we can put that in the furniture folder just to keep things tidy and we'll open that up. Um, so once we're in here we have our mesh that we can set so I'm going to set this to the tent uh, like that. Um, you may need to move it um, basically you want the where this checkered line is you want that um, be that's going to be the floor so you can see my tent sort of sits on top of it um, so we know it's going to look okay in the world um, if you have additional meshes, meshes that you want to add you can just select the stack mesh um, add uh, components search for stack mesh and you can just add your own um, additional uh, mesh components um, so we can compile this quickly next we're going to add the uh, build collision now this is the collision that um, the system checks to make sure that um, nothing's overlapping our uh, build part when we're placing it so to do that i'm going to uh, select the default um, scene route and we're going to add a new box collision um, you can use other collision types it doesn't have to be a box um, i'm just going to call this uh, build collision um, and then with it selected, we're going to search for tags and then details, add a new tag, and this will be build collision. Uh, one word with uh, the V and the C as capitals, so it looks like that. And then we can compile again. Now we can uh, reshape and uh, move our build collision. So I'm just going to move mine up a little bit and scale it out. Um, so with with this I recommend keeping it slightly above the ground because we don't want it to collide with the ground otherwise it's gonna not allow us to place um, and depending on your build part you may want to allow for a little bit of overlap with other things so you might want to make it a little bit smaller than the build part actually is um, you can also untick the uh, scale snapping by doing this you can just smoothly scale it um, I'm not gonna do mine super precise but you can if you like and you can also do multiple um, collision uh, components. All you do is just duplicate this one or uh, add it via the uh, add option and then make sure you add the build collision tag to any new ones you add and then you can just position those um, as well as we are um, with this. So I'm happy with this um, as our build collision so anything, um, if anything's uh, overlapping this build uh, square then it won't allow us to place our tent. Next we're going to add the ground checks. Now this is optional. Um, if you want to, you can not do this and you'll just be able to place the build part in the in midair with no floor. Um, but for our tent, I want to uh, require a floor um, to place it on. So I'm going to do add component. I'm going to search for ground. We want the ground check component. Um, we don't want it to be a child for that, so I'm just going to drag it up to and uh, let's uh, detach from that and uh, next we're going to position this so the way this works is um, from this point uh, it will do a trace down and look for um, a ground to hit make sure that our mesh is on the ground um, again you can have multiple of these so um, for my tent I'm going to add I'll add two um, we'll make the Z zero so it's flat on the ground um, I'm going to raise it up slightly because uh, we don't, if there's um, some ground there, we don't want it to trace underneath the ground. We want it to actually hit it. So I'm just going to raise it up a little bit um, and then I'm going to put it to the edge here. And then I'm just going to duplicate this and I will drag this one over to the back like that. If you wanted to, you could have one at each corner. Um, you could have as many as you like. Um, and what that's going to do, we'll trace down, and if it finds some ground, then we'll be able to place our tent. Now, in these settings, you can see the ground trace distance. By default, it's uh, 180, which is quite far. And um, this basically means that it will trace down 1.8 meters. Search for the ground. Um, we don't really want it to be that high for a tent. We want it to be quite low. So I'm going to set mine to 10, and I'll do this for both of them. 
um, keep in mind that um, if you're so mine's uh, five in the Z so um, we've got plenty of space to hit the ground if this was like 20 then 10 would be too low we'd probably want to put it up to like 30 um, just so it's uh, tracing far enough down uh, to hit the floor so now we've set those up we can just compile now we're ready to add um, our new build part to the build part list so I'm just going to go to build parts then the build part list and in here I'm just going to hit add I'm going to double click to name the row I'm just going to call mine 10 um, and you can go through and fill out these details um, I'm just going to fill mine out um, with the basic info so 10 you can add a description here if you like uh, the type needs to be a uh, furniture and then these settings are fairly self-explanatory um, can it take damage does this require a grid um, for furniture you can make it require a grid but for this example we're not going to use that um, you can make it ignore the floor collision um, so this is helpful if you actually want um, part of your your furniture mesh to go underneath the ground um, but I'm going to leave this off for now um, I'm going to enable cam rotate uh, so that's you know, whether or not the player can rotate the object uh, show the rotation arrow so this is the um, black arrow that shows when we're in preview preview mode um, I'm just going to leave that off I'm going to set the rotation increment to 90 then our blueprint class will be the tent that we just created um, we can set the resource cost so uh, I'm just going to set mine to say cost 10 wood um, and if you wanted to you could also add another one and set that to stone or metal or whatever next is the uh, build menu icon so this is the icon that shows up with the uh, radial menu when we're um, selecting to build it um, I'm just going to use uh, I'll just use the fire icon that's included um, obviously you would probably have your own icon um, if you're adding your own um, build part um, we can allow repair set and the um, cost of the repair you can set an upgrade build part allow the build part to be picked up and how many resources are received when you pick it up um, you can add height adjust so uh, this is like how the foundations have where you can scroll to um, adjust the current height um, and then we've got some settings for that um, then we've got use hit surface rotation this is used if you um, plan to be able to place on like um, walls and things um, the lant uh, sorry the lamp uh, uses that um, setting um, and then lastly the uh, hit rotation offset is also used for when um, placing against walls um, if you want to see an example you can uh, check out the lamp um, it doesn't actually use this setting um, but it allows you to um, give an offset to the ro rotation of the build part um, so that's pretty much everything um, I'm gonna leave that as is so we can save this now next we need to add our new build part to the radial menu now I'm going to have a separate video for uh, the radial menu that explains um, its settings and how to use it. Um, but for this video, I'm just going to be, um, we're just going to go to page one um, and I'm just going to change out one of the current uh, build parts to our tent instead. So I'll just go with the um, floor for now. So I'm just going to select the floor. Um, then in the uh, details, I'm just going to change the build part from floor to tent like that. You can see the icons updated and then we can just compile next we need to go back to our tent then go to class defaults and in here you need to find the build part category we'll open that up and uh, the data table needs to be the build part list and we want to set the row name to uh, the tent one we just created and we can select the tent and uh, in here we can also set things like uh, the health so if you wanted the tent to have say 200 health we'd set max and current health to 200 um, if we wanted to we could turn the health bar off um, this is uh, when you look at the build part there's a little health bar UI you can disable that uh, if you like um, other than that you can set the destroy sound um, you can also set the destructible mesh um, here as well if you have one um, if you don't know how to make one it's fairly simple just uh, right click of a stack mesh and do create destructible mesh and uh, then you can set that in the uh, in here um, and so we're going to compile now 
now we're ready to uh, test our tent out. So we can just jump in. I'm just going to uh, hit play. And I'm going to uh, open up our menu and load up our tent. So you can see we can't place it in the sky because we're using the, um, the ground checks. Uh, we can rotate. Um, if I try and collide it with something, it uh, blocks the collision because we've got our collision set up. Um, and if I click, we can place the tent uh, like that. And you can see um, the tent isn't actually blocking my um, preview, and that's just because my static mesh doesn't actually have any collision. Um, to see this, you can just open up your mesh, click on um, simple collision, and you can see there's nothing's appeared. Um, if I just did a collision box, um, obviously it's not the best collision, but it, it works as an example. Um, you can play it. if your mesh doesn't have collision, you can play about with these settings to uh, find a better match for your mesh. But now if I jump in quickly um, and build a tent, you can see now I can't place on the tent. I also can't walk through it as well. Um, so that's pretty much it for adding um, new build parts, uh, new furniture build parts. Um, if you have any questions, please leave a comment. Thank you for watching.